we have one of the more exciting prospects out here in the Arizona Fall League, one of the Cubs' top prospects, the current leader in hits, triples, and OPS in the Arizona Fall League. He's batting 425, three homers, three doubles, five triples, 15 RBI, nine steals, 1205 OPS. James Triantos, welcome to the show, James man. James Triantos. How's it going, guys? I'm, uh, I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on here. Look, obviously, you're crushing out here. There's no doubt about it. Uh, what has this AFL experience been for you so far? Not only what you're doing, but the opportunity to play with and against other great talent. No, I mean, it's, it's an amazing experience so far. I'm having so much fun. Um, you know, all these different guys, just being able to learn from. Um, everybody goes about their work differently. Um, just, you know, seeing seeing what they do, learning from it, taking little pieces. Um, it's just been so much fun. Everybody's cool. Um, yeah, no, it's been a great experience. We, we have this really, uh, it, this would be an interesting thing. So we've, we've talked to a couple players, and you've had multiple guys that we've kind of gone through that, I don't want to say like struggling or whatever, but obviously you come to the AFL and you don't put like a ton of focus on what's going on here. And we've talked to multiple guys where maybe strikeouts rates are higher average, and we're like, don't worry about it. You know, AFL, they're not worried about, yeah. and they're not focused on it, but you're killing it. I mean, you, you humbly front runner for the MVP, you know, you're set up for. How much do you put into the performance? Because we got guys that are obviously working on things, and there's some negatives out there that don't focus on it, but there have been just nothing but positives. So how much do you want to put stock and focus on what you've done here? No, I mean, I feel like I'm still doing just, you know, doing my thing, really. It's just staying day to day, staying in the present, um, focusing on what I'm doing now, getting really good at it. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, just staying locked in on what I'm what I'm doing right now is the most important thing. Right. And uh, if I keep doing it, I feel like good things will happen. Yeah, are there any of those numbers too? Because again, on the negative side, uh, we were talking with Carson Williams the other day, and Carson had a really good head about him, like knowing like, yeah, the strikeout numbers are there, but like, I'm just not worried about that. I'm not focused on that. Is there uh, something that you're doing from a statistical standpoint that you're looking at and you're like, this is pretty sweet? Like, you know, the power's coming up, the doubles are there. You're, I mean, you're doing everything, so I really feel like I, I wish I could pinpoint one thing and be mm -hmm. like, isn't this cool? But you're doing all of them? I mean, I, I really think it comes down to just going up there and executing my plan, and that's how I'm trying to judge my bats. And I feel like I'm doing a good job of executing it consistently over and over again. So, um, and you know, the results will come from that. So that's um, what I'm happy with right now, I'd say. Doing a pretty good well, job. Yeah, well, let's talk about that plan. I mean, I don't want to give away the secrets here, but is there anything that you've changed during your approach while you're out here, something specific that you wanted to work on that's kind of helped bring this success? Um, no, it's really just keeping it simple. I, um, I just start a little bit earlier, start my move, and then that's, that's it. I, I don't think about anything my body does. I just go up there and if it looks good I swing and if it doesn't I take it and walk <laughs> yeah something something I noticed about just your improvements this season in the minors is that you improved your chase rate uh dramatically but while maintaining big exit velocities being more selective is that something that kind of helped you improve on the power metrics this past season is, is it something that you were consciously working on or um I think that this year, going through rehab, I had a really good chance to track. We have uh, one of those traject machines, and I was on it every single day, just facing the best pitchers in major leagues. Um, so, you know, just going through it, seeing pitches, and, you know, visualizing, do I like it, do I not like it, what am I going to do with it? And having a chance to do that over and over again consistently was really good for me going into a season. One of those things when you're talking about when you're up to the plate, you're just thinking about nothing. Mm -hmm. It's all natural that has to be trained beforehand mm -hmm. and everything you're doing is training to that moment where you're like, okay, this just naturally happens mm -hmm. after a game. Uh, I heard you mention this on foul territory. You talked about like a, there's like a checklist. You know, there's mm -hmm. this checklist that goes on. I'm curious if maybe you could identify maybe a, what that checklist might look like. You're at an at bat. It's all clear brain. You're doing the things. When mm -hmm. you look back, is that checklist for a game like I, okay, great. I didn't strike out or I didn't swing at pitches outside the zone. I barreled the ball. I stole a base. I got a good lead on a runner. Like, what? What is a few of those checklist things that maybe you come back to look like? Um, really, again, it's about executing my plan. Was I, if I hit a ball, you know, based on the way the ball comes off my bat or the way I swung at it, um, 
I'll be able to tell if I was, if I started early enough. And that's really the only thing that I'm looking for right now. Um, because if I'm not on time, I'm not going to hit anything well. The ball's not going to spin, spin well off my bat. So that's probably the biggest thing. Just go back, did I execute my plan? And that's basically what I on top. What, what James said was kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Just keep it <laughs> yes. simple. Get it going. It's yes. the kiss method. I yeah. like the kiss method. We've talked a lot so far about offense, but defensively, notice that you're playing a bunch of different positions out here in the AFL, second base, center field, third base. Is there one that you're more comfortable than the others? Uh, what, what do you think about kind of playing all over the diamond? Um, I enjoy it, you know, just being able to contribute uh, from everywhere. Um, but I'm still more comfortable in the infield, for sure. Uh, this offseason, I'm definitely going to be working, you know, everywhere to make sure I'm comfortable comfortable everywhere I can go out there and play. Um, but I think I'm, I'm definitely more comfortable in the infield right now, uh, just moving around there, still learning in the outfield. Nice having Kevin next to me sometimes. He'll, he'll talk me through some stuff. Now, that's cool, though, too, yeah. because I remember last year we were here and we saw Jordan Walker working in the outfield, right? And, like, this is yeah. the perfect opportunity to, like, come out and, and try and get more comfortable mm -hmm. playing a new position. And obviously, you're getting that opportunity to play in the outfield. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, you know, it all, that also happened a couple years ago. Um, I cite him a lot, but Royce Lewis was out here. And Royce was, Royce was actually told, uh, he told this to me, so I'm not like, giving away a secret. I feel wouldn't want to give away his stuff. But he told me, he said, they came to him and they said, we don't actually have a spot for you to play shortstop here, but we'd love for you to come here. And Royce was like, let's do it. Let's mm -hmm. go. And he had missed a lot of time. And he came out here and he played every position but the position that he is now, you know, locking down. Or I mean, obviously with Correa moving around. But... Um, that was an opportunity for him that he just was like completely open to to come out here, get the at bats, get that rhythm back going, and then it just created this extra flexibility for him as a player. Mm -hmm. And I was curious. Obviously, you did it a little bit in the minor leagues, but was there any of that pre-talk about like, hey, we really want? Because I could see a scenario where you could come here to the AFL and just like play one position. Mm -hmm. But did was there anything with the Cubs or even yourself where you're just like, I want to play multiple to be more versatile? Um, I mean, yeah, some of the Cubs guys came and talked to me in the season before I went and played the outfield, and they were like, you know, help your versatility and get into the big leagues, make it give you different. Um, you know, more skills as a player. And I was like, I'm fine with that. You know, go out there, catch some balls. As long as it ends up in my glove, I'm, I'm fine. So, um, but since then, it's really just, you know, about getting better, learning more about the position, um, just studying it, understanding it more. Yeah. Uh, there, there was something really cool for you guys. I'm citing this again. There's an interview you did with Foul Territory, which you did a great job, by the way. That's a, that was like a big show. It was Thank a big you. thing you were doing. And you probably saw a lot of the clips that went out there was you mentioned they asked you about um, a couple players like who you grew up loving you mentioned Kyle Schwarber and if you guys haven't listened to this this will be funny hearing the comp come back where they said who do you like you said Kyle Schwarber who do you model yourself self after you said Luisa Rise mm -hmm. and it's like Polar opposites. Two, yeah. Polar opposites. Yeah, yeah, if you could mold I those know, two players, you might have the greatest baseball player of all time if you could put those yeah. two players together. Yeah. So I love that answer. And you caught them off guard, which was really uh -huh. cool. But um, I'd be curious at all if maybe you could expand a little bit more, like, like what does that look like to you when you mold yourself after? I think we could all probably contextualize that you probably mean the, his ability to make contact. Mm -hmm. and he's always hitting the ball. Mm -hmm. And the counting stats are not important. That's kind of the knock that anybody would focus on a mm -hmm. rise. But like, what does that mean to you when you think about modeling your game after a rise? Um, I mean, you know, when I stick to my approach, there's nothing. I feel like there isn't anything a pitcher can get by me. Um, that's just, you know, how I go about it in the box. And I feel like when I'm doing my thing the right way, I'm on the barrel a lot. So I feel like, and he was on the barrel a lot, a lot the past of couple of years. So, I mean, just watching him hit, he's pretty, pretty unbelievable. And, you, and your AFL performance probably is giving like a little bit more confidence to exactly what you're hoping for. You're like, hey, I want to be a little bit more like Luis Rise. By the way, he's hitting over 400, and he's doing everything you could possibly do. So, like, you're taking, you know, what you're – what the mindset is, and mm -hmm. you're literally manifesting it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, just got to keep going. Yeah, got to keep going. One more week. Right. Yeah, so. we, know, we know analytics are so important and prevalent in, in today's game, and I, it could be overwhelming for us. I mean, look, we're playing fantasy baseball, so I can only imagine mm -hmm. how hard it is for a baseball player to actually implement these things in your game. Mm -hmm. But is it something that you pay attention a lot to? Do you pay attention to launch angle and, and exit velocities, or are they coming to you and giving you that information, or... 
how, how do you how do you approach it? Um, you know, we have access to like look at all that different type of stuff, but I really just I keep it I keep it simple again because it's too much. Yeah, you know, yep, too yep. much is too much. I like keeping you know one or two things in my head when I'm going up there and swinging, or when I'm um, looking at my bats, stuff like that. And um, that's kind of how I evaluate myself uh, because when you know, I start thinking about more things. It's harder. To, it's just harder to hit because there's more things going on in my head. Yeah, you know, that's it's a, that's something I've actually experienced in talking to a lot of players. I remember um, I chatted with you remember Taylor Trammell. Okay. I talked to Taylor Trammell many years ago when he was at the Mariners and he was out here in the AFL, and I was just like, hey, man, isn't it like analytics? I was just doing all this stuff, and he was just like, no. He's like, I got to keep it. Like, the, mm-hmm. the amount of, like, having to keep these things simple where us – bunch we're nerds like we're like look at yeah. expect it and, and like we get very hyper focused all of that but then at the same time like your brain can just fry you yeah. have to you have to be clear minded to do this yeah stuff. i feel like i can't be thinking about what i'm doing when i'm competing with that guy on the mound that's yeah. that's just the way that i think about it yeah especially when like, they're especially not when there. he's got you know like a 91 mile an hour slider i can't be thinking about where my where my hands are <laughs> like, where yeah. i want to hit the ball i'm just gonna swing yeah exactly like, <laughs> uh just a couple last of things some easy ones mm-hmm. here um want to be very focused on you but i just want to ask you this you have two very fascinating players if you guys haven't seen that you're playing with they're like polar opposites mm-hmm. you have kevin Alcantara, six foot five this is a donis looking player mm-hmm. and then you have chad durbin who is like five you know five foot six mm-hmm. maybe five foot six but i think everybody would think maybe i want to talk about kevin Alcantara. You are more than welcome to espouse about him, but I have been very fascinated with Chad Durbin because he is always going to be focused on, uh, it's always going to be focused on his contact rate, but, uh, or um, his size, but the way he's hit the ball, the way he's been still in the base, the way that he has approached this game, he's phenomenal. I'd just be yeah. really curious at, uh, at your thoughts on him. He, no, he's, uh, he's a really good player. I, uh, I got a chance to play against him in I said Myrtle Chad, last year. Caleb, sorry, Caleb, yeah. Yeah, I got a chance to uh, play against him in Myrtle last year. He was with the Braves in Augusta, so um, and he raked against us uh, every week we played him, um, and he's done that. You know, watching him go about his business in the cage, it's it's really fun. It's everything's crisp, everything's clean, low effort level. Um, you know, he goes about his business like a pro. It's fun to watch and goes out in the game and he bangs every day. And these guys are mean, by the way. Mace is mean. Yesterday it was like nine stolen bases in the first six <laughs> innings, if you watch it. Caleb was a monster. Boom, boom, boom. You, yeah. you guys were mean. I mean, yeah. I don't know if there has been some uptick in um, maybe with the new rules, wanting to steal more, if you feel you have the extra advantage. I don't know what that's been. I've seen a couple instances of that, but you guys really had it going the other day. Yeah, they're, I mean... You know, some of the pitchers were a little bit slower to the plate, so we just take advantage of it if they're going to give it to us. He's fast. Muncy's fast. Um, I think he had three yeah, bags had yesterday three, yeah. too. Yeah. So like, if they're going <clears> to <throat> if they're going to give it to us, then might as well take. Did it. you have one? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, yeah. Were they like, yeah. what's wrong? They're like, why, just, you yeah, have, why you only have one? Why you only have one steal, man? Three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. <sighs> uh, we mentioned earlier, there's like so much talent here in the Arizona Fall League. It's it kind of putting you on the spot here, but. Pitchers, any pitchers that stand out as like the toughest guy you've faced while you've been out here? Um, there were, I mean, Tiedman was good. I th- there was a reliever from the Red Sox that I, I can't remember his name. Um, he was like 96, 98 with the slider at 91. Troy? Chris Troy. Troy? No, he was like. We're going through all of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember his name. Zach Penrod? Not Penrod. He's a righty. Mm-mm. Dang it. Wide Olds. Olds. Yeah, yeah him. Him. Okay. He was good. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> there, was a, there was a lever from the Padres that was pretty good, too. He was a Latin guy. I can't remember. Yes. He was like 95, 98 with That's a good slider. Yeah. 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 He was he was good, oh, too. Man, he's just giving these guys more. Is there, is there anyone else that stands out, like, maybe throughout the minor league season, like, not just here at the AFL, like, just pitcher-wise, like, someone that, like, really, really had great stuff? Um... You know, there's always like a couple guys now and then that come out of the pen that are just gross. just filthy stuff. Like, yeah. yeah, like 98 to 100 with sink, sink. Um, but like, 
I can't. I don't think I can name a starter that I felt really overwhelmed me this year. You know, one I was just thinking of was I don't know if you faced him, Emiliano Teodo, who I've talked a lot about. Mm -hmm. He's like, you okay. <laughs> just, <he> just <laughs> got uncomfortable. Okay, okay, okay. Just I got faced, uncomfortable okay, when okay. I said that. I faced him in the ACL too, and Loe. He, the first time I faced him, he was throwing 102 again, two years ago, and. He went right on my head first pitch. I was terrified. Oh, gosh. So, uh, right. yeah, I, mean, Never again. I mean, yeah, after that, I was like, ooh. It's, right. it's not fair for a guy to throw. And he throws 102, and then this slider, that I think it's a slider, that just, it's it's in the it's, zone. Um, and now he throws sinkers. Like, that was um, last year and the year before it was four seamers. So. It's sometimes baseball's not fair. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's good. Then that's even more reason why you want to be more like Luisa Rise when baseball's not fair like that. Uh, this last one for you. Um, you know, this I think it's been a great year. You've been able to come back from, like you said, with the injury. Very successful AFL. We're all excited for you. We're super excited you're here. What are your goals for 2024? And I know it's a big question, and it can be, hey, you want to stay healthy. Obviously, you're going to want to stay healthy, but. I'm even talking, it could be a statistical goal. It could be, I've talked to many players, like Jared Kelnick tell me like, I wanna be 2020, like mm -hmm. he worked with his team. So sometimes you have that statistical goal, obviously the majors, but what goals, if any, have you set your, for yourself yet? If you've even had time to process that for 2024? Um, I mean, I'm definitely, I haven't had a lot of uh, time to think about it just because we're still going right now. Yeah. Um, but I know that I want 30 bags in 2024. That's, that's, that's it. There we sure. go. At hey. least 30, and I can do that, I'm sure. You can absolutely do that. Hey, the way we're it. seeing you run out here, you've yeah. already got the nine bags. And as fantasy players, I, we, we love to hear it. Mm -hmm. Speed is great for fantasy yeah. baseball. So, yeah, uh, happy to hear you working on that. Um, and, yeah, hopefully we see you uh, in 2024 uh, sure. and beyond with the uh, Chicago Cubs. Again, yeah. one of the top prospects out here, I would say, arguably, the AFL MVP. Give it up for James Triantos coming by today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely.